welcome guys i'm gonna do a different video about how england was formed because i always been doing the uk music videos reaction and um i watch like some uk series most of the time but i haven't really known much about england or the uk united kingdom so i'm gonna do a little video to see what the united kingdom is really all about it's often taken for granted and looked at Far too scarcely, this may lead you to the overshadowing history of the development of Great Britain and the United Kingdom. But nonetheless, in order for these unions to be formed, England had to already exist, and it actually has since 927 B. So how oh, so all of that is actually England. I think that small English, piece is actually the Ireland, we know or today. North Ireland, I think. As the Roman Empire began to fade from the British Isles, the area of modern-day England started so to see a wave of migration. So that small part was actually England. That's crazy, bro. So they, what they did, they conquer everything else. After the Romans left, the native Britons came under attack. Dude, you know what? Picts and Scots, and subsequently. Most people don't even know that England is actually an island. <laughs> honest God, most people don't even know that, bro. I'm, t I'm gonna be honest. We have this entire misunderstanding of what Darwin really meant when he said survival of the fittest. The whole earth is actually one cohesive system. Everything is interrelated to each other. Some of these Anglo-Saxons in hopes that they would push out the other invaders. The Germanic peoples were successful in expelling both the Scots and Picts, but they then turned on the native Britons and established their own authority. Migration the of the seventh century. The new Anglo-Saxon rulers then installed the kingdoms of Essex, Kent, Sussex, Mercia, East Anglia, Northumbria, and Man, Wessex. so England was actually conquered by other race or other tribes, and then Britain itself or England itself conquer other countries. And the next thing people don't even realize, as most of people want to call America racist and America this and America conqueror, they forgot that England were, was a way bigger conqueror. I think England is one of the biggest conquerors in history. Like it conquer over a hundred countries. So, England was doing its thing for a small ass island. Not really small, but it's, it's not like massive like British America. Mainland. So, for there that are small records of what happened over country the few compared to America or China to conquer so many lands, England did a great Saxons but destructive feat. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to be honest, bro. In 793, a Viking army landed at the Lindisfarne Monastery and raided the sacred building. Their violence and disrespect stunned the Anglo-Saxons, who were unprepared for what these Vikings had in store. Oh, the, the Vikings! End of 870, East Anglia fell to the Danish invaders, and Mercia was lost only four years later. As the Vikings seized Northumbria next in 875, Wessex was the only remaining major kingdom under Anglo-Saxon Dude, authority. if only they have the cameras back then to actually video all these situations. His younger brother, Alfred, was left to protect his kingdom's independence. At first, he did so by paying off the Viking aggressors until he was eventually prepared to lead an army against them. This culminated in the Battle of Eddington, which left the Danes utterly routed and ended their attempts to capture Wessex. A power vacuum in Mercia around the I wonder same how time big Wessex King is, is like, if you compare it to like a kingdom, small country, how big it really is. He placed an alderman in charge. This nobleman would answer to King Alfred himself and kept the King of Wessex as the ultimate authority throughout both regions, although a part of Mercia would be ceded to the Vikings. After the death of the King of Wessex and the contemporary leader of Mercia in 911, Edward the Elder and Ethelfled each became the respective successors together. These new rulers began to Dude, this is so interesting, man, just to see on the neighboring Danelaw. 
these histories of these countries. I'm gonna probably check out more of this. Because it's so interesting. All of East Anglia into his kingdom. As Ethelfled pushed forward with the expansion, she managed to extend Mercian territory all the way 917. to the where the locals decided it would be best to simply pledge loyalty to her as opposed to fighting. Although Ethelfred shortly died, her daughter, Elfwyn, was supposed to take her place and continue on the current course. Unexpectedly, though, the Mercian people oh, put the actually the fight by the Vikings and accidentally created the perfect Wait, opportunity for King Where Edward. the Vikings are part of Scotland Mercia didn't conquer Wales. The Wales was a free country by itself. The Saxons it's not continued in any colors. into Danelaw they up here in Scotland. And slowly gained more so I don't know. I, I'm, well, they're probably going to show it. They're probably going to show it. At the time of Edward's death in 924, the newly acquired neighbors of the Anglo Saxons had all pledged allegiance to the king. This put the Anglo Saxons in a confident position as Edward's son, Ethelstan, took over the kingdom. Around this time, Ethelton's sister would marry the local Viking ruler, Citric, who still controlled Oh, so they teamed up. Ethelstan. Damn, that's crazy. So, we are starting to see how the monarch actually formed Kyra, like, all these kings as passed down the show to their kings, to their sons, and then, then they become kings, and then they keep, and the like, in royal family type of situation. As part of his kingdom. This is generally the time that most historians view the kingdom of England as having been created. But the situation was not exactly so simple. Ethelstan was not done trying to expand his kingdom however he could. And although he did term himself the king of the English at this point, it was oh, still so, so, not quite dude, that's crazy. That I was as I, I actually today, look like a Ethelstan big country decided itself. to give an invasion of Scotland a chance to see if he could reach his authority even further. The Kingdom of Scotland, or as it was known at the time, Alaba, was at a disadvantage against the English and therefore appealed to the other remaining sovereign states for assistance. This prompted an alliance between Constantine II, King so of So Scotland Alaba, actually was Christen, King a country Bobby, for itself. Dwayne, King of Strathclyde. With King Olaf at the helm, the alliance faced the English at the spectacular Battle of Brunnenburg. Though it is unknown exactly where this battle took place, it is certain that the alliance was severely crushed by the English invaders. The casualties on both sides was disastrously Damn. bad. Damn. and the English were without a doubt the victors. It's believed by many that this clash may have truly solidified the unity of England and stirred up a new sense of nationalism and pride amongst So the England people. defeat all three of them. It didn't result in the incorporation of Alaba nor Strathclyde into the Kingdom of England, as both stayed independent. England, on the other hand, would have to prove its ability to do so. The Vikings, though temporarily defeated, would return to the Young Kingdom at the end of the 10th century. After Ethelstan's death in 939, the previously defeated King of Dublin, who was a Viking ruler, took immediate advantage of England's temporary Damn. instability. While King Ethelstan's brother Edmund took over the English realm, after they get asked to beat Vikings, like, dude, I'm gonna come back to reclaim my country. That had once been in Viking hands, York was quickly captured. And a large chunk of what used to be Northumbria and Mercia was also taken as he strong armed the English into accepting this annexation. Ironically, when Olaf died, Dude, this in is why you see countries can't let their defense the down name, because as soon as they let the defense down, and if countries can just easily swoop in and take it over, especially back then. The, Vikings back for the, invasion. the following year, the middle chunk of annexed land was retaken by the English, and in only two more years, the Vikings were entirely pushed out of Northumbria. This essentially reunited England since the territory was <laughs> Dude, it's like these guys actually wait for a weakness, like how any weak spot they got, they're gonna attack. Edmund next invaded Strathclyde, but only took some of its southern territories by the end of the incursion. The rest was given to King Malcolm I of Scotland, as opposed to joining England. It once again appeared as though the Kingdom of England had established some stability. Oh, this old situation started when i think about it when england was invaded so much i wonder if that really changed them a lot like dude we were invaded so much we're not gonna have no mercy on anyone so they just went out and start conquering other places 
I don't know, bro. I, I they just I'm... wanted lands to make profit off of because the new world. But this was once more short lived. Edmund was mysteriously uh, murdered. But this is in so interesting, bro. I didn't even know that we was, there was so much battle brother, in the United Kingdom as itself. King of England, the next year, Eric Bloodaxe from Norway. and seized the recently reincorporated Northumbria area, which prompted almost a decade of conflict. No way, even even now the Isles would lead Northumbria. That's crazy. The English king Dude, then never now here now we in any battle. Permanently reclaim the territory on behalf of England. His death soon ended his reign after this victory, and his young nephew Edwig temporarily succeeded him but was quickly deposed in favor of his brother, Edgar. However, this was only a partial deposition, which meant that Edwig would still hold a small saw, were actually upheld in hopes of avoiding any displeasure from the Danish portion of the population. Peace, unity, and order were the pillars of Edgar's nearly two decade long- Dude, I'm just listing all these kings that have been killed, died out, sacrificed. Law were actually upheld in hopes of avoiding any displeasure from the Danish portion of the population. Peace, unity, and order were the pillars of Edgar's nearly two decade long reign, and his work helps to fully solidify the unity of the young Kingdom of England. The ultimate foundation of England was a long and shaky process. Dude, my laptop From the is initial immigration up, of the Anglo-Saxons into the region to the establishment of their first kingdoms, extending into the invasion and rule of the Vikings, it wasn't until the Anglo-Saxons began to seize territory from the Danelov that an inkling of modern-day England could be seen. After a series of conquering, being conquered, reconquering, and so on, the Anglo-Saxons eventually united the existing kingdoms throughout England. From there, it was merely a matter of establishing solid borders, maintaining... Dude, and funny enough, England has been, in, as I said, in so much battle within its own borders. And then it's the rule of spread out, taking other people's lands. ...building the foundational laws and structures of what we know now as the kingdom or nation of England. Oh, this doesn't show like. Wait. I'm probably have to watch a different video because I thought this one was gonna show everything like in like United Kingdom, like Scotland, and all those other parts. So probably that's gonna be in a different video. So I'm probably gonna check out a different video and see what's going on. But yeah, guys, very interesting to see how England was farm. Funny that it's been in so many battles, so many invasion, so many um crisis and everything like that but yet england took over so many different places very very strange